you doing guys? The last couple of videos have been largely concentrating on showing you evidence that these forts were not originally built for military purposes. How are people in the 16th and 17th century carving this out of the hillside? you got to ask the question, if they're building these things for military purposes, for war, surely you, if you if it was an emergency, emergency war situation, you wouldn't be making elaborate designs. I mean, how long is that going to take in the, in the 16th century to carve it out, to the, out of the hillside? Hurry up, Pablo. The French are coming. Today, I wanted to go into detail of the history a little bit more of the Nove, which also backs up that the official narrative on when these places were built is incorrect. So let's go to Wikipedia and read out the official narrative on the Nove Fort. So the Nove Fort is a fort in Weymouth, Dorset, England, situated at the end of the Nove Peninsula, which juts eastward, eastwards from the town of Weymouth and Weymouth Harbour into the sea to the north of the ex-military Portland Harbour. The fort is located next to Nove Gardens. The coastal defence was built between 1860 and 1872 by 26 company of the Royal Engineers to, to protect Portland and Weymouth harbours, with Portland then becoming an important Royal Navy base. Shaped like the letter D, the fort was built with bomb-proof casemates and deep magazines. The fort was abandoned in 1956 and purchased by the local council in 1961. It is now a museum and remains one of the best preserved forts of its kind in the country. The fort and its outer gateway have been Grade 2 listed since 1974. Its fusy steps, located in Nove Gardens, have been grade listed since 2000 and was constructed for hauling trolleys, transporting ammunition, spares and stores from the quay to the Nove Fort. In 1978, the Nove Fort tramway and searchlight battery at the Nove also became scheduled under the Ancient Monuments and Archaeological Area Acts 1979. So I wanted to try and go through this page to, yeah, I wanted to show you this page in detail and it will become prevalent later with other stuff that I will show you. So I'm not going to read it all out, but the key thing I wanted to concentrate on is the construction date. So work began on No Fort in 1860 by a civil engineer and contractor. I believe it was Messrs. Without, I can find it down there. So we've got recent history. By 1961, the Navy had no further use of the fort and it was sold to Weymouth for Malcolm Region Council. Let's click on every part because I don't want people to say that I've missed anything out. It will all become relevant later with what I'm going to show you. So what I wanted to really point out here was there is definitely no text or paragraph or anything on this page and and this is the same for all the history local history sites um, that write on an ave as well there's absolutely no mention of a fort ever being here before 1860 there's no so Yes, let's quickly go through this paragraph. So, the work began on No Fort in 1860 by a civil engineering co contractor with the first stage of construction involving levelling the site and building a sea wall. After the contractor 
suffered financial problems, a construction work was then taken over by 26 company Royal Engineers in 1862. Although the Upper Earthen Parapet was complete by 1869, the fort was fully commissioned in 1872 at the cost of £117,049. It was constructed on three levels. The magazine stored the ammunition. The ground level casemates were designed to hold heavy muzzle loaded cannons and accommodation for the soldiers manning them and the ramparts featuring raised platform that could be used to fire weapons such as muskets and light muzzle loaded cannons during attacks. So in that paragraph there where it says with the first stage of construction involved in levelling the site and building a sea wall. So there's no mention of, of uh, being anything there ever before and if you read this and any history that is on any site I won't name any other sites because I don't want to name and shame. I do believe quite a lot of the time that it is innocent with these these guys. I mean, with the, with the websites and the history, local historians. But some of it, I will, which I will come on to later, they are avoiding stuff because I, I, like I will point out later, they do know about what I'm going to point out in a bit. So what I want to try and point out is there is no mention whatsoever of there uh, being anything on there before 1860 and if you read read this site um and you if you were going to find out about no fort and put into google obviously wikipedia would be one of the first things you come up with and then you go to all the local sites as well no nowhere does it mention anywhere that there was if you read that if nowhere does it ever mention anywhere that there was anything on this site before it's suggesting it was built from scratch in 1860 through to 1872 and I want to bring the point up which I've brought up in in previous videos that you've also got to take into consideration the construction photos so it was built between 1860 and 1872 there is no excuse for not there not being any in any photos because photography was very popular then i believe i'll, I'll bring it up again in, in a sec i believe it was the 1830s where it started to become more common but by by the late 1850s it was worldwide worldwide there is no excuse i say with um if you were the architect that designed these places you would want a record of your work in as many stages as possible because you'd be proud of it you you wouldn't you you'd be taking photos every single step of the way and as is the case with many of these places, not just to know for, there are never any construction photos. And the ones that they do show you, the odd two or three here and there, and the photos that they do, the, the very few photos that there are of these places could easily be restoration and is most likely restoration because you, again, you never ever see it from from the start ever whenever whenever you see any of these um construction photos claiming to be the nove or the Vern, which which is in the background now i would argue a lot of them look like deconstruction no way do they look like construction photos this the, the photo that i'm showing in the background now do you seriously think that it'd work in those conditions when when you're if you're building if you're building something it, just look at all the the rubble everywhere but it would be the, the exact way it would be if you were deconstructing the site and there's been a lot of deconstruction that's gone on in Portland over the last couple of hundred years when you tally this up with all the other evidence 
for me, it suggests one thing and one thing only, that these photos do not exist. Because they can't exist, because the places weren't originally built at that time period. So the Palmerston Follies were built under the Royal Commission on a Defence of the United Kingdom Act, or committee, shall I say, which was formed in 1859. I don't want to go too deep into this, but I just wanted to point out the, the costs that, that were involved in this. So forts were built at a number of locations, including Portsmouth, the Isle of Wight, um, say Weymouth, Portland, Plymouth, I believe it was 72 in total. And here you can see the costs that were involved in that. Which also included the cost in, in the costings were 500,000 for the armament of these works. And 1 million for the construction of floating batteries, given the grand total to 11 million 850,000. So to give you an idea of that, and it, I'll be honest, it's been quite tricky to find house prices before 1900, which is interesting. So I'll have to, so just to give you an idea, in 1900, so this is 30 years after these places were supposedly built, a house price was £200. And they've spent eleven point eight five million on seventy two elaborate forts that they never used and never fired fired a shot from. So back to the nave. So as I've suggested, I do not believe the no fort was built when they say it was built. I believe it was there before and I believe at best it was restoration work they were doing in the constructions photo they claim to be construction photos. So in a, this is a book from 1785. The Weymouth Guide exhibiting the ancient and present state of Weymouth and Malcolm Regis. And this is just a, a and this is just a, a local guide. And if we go down to page 53. So. It's talking about the forts around the town. And I know you guys are not local to the area. Well, most of you are not. I won't know these places, but. I think I'll make it quite obvious that they are all referring to the same place. Well, it's very, it's very obvious they are. So it's talking about the various forts that were in the town. So the chapel, as we have observed, was converted into a fort, new fort or jetty fort at the entrance of the harbour. At the end of the old pier, at the foot of the hill, was taken down in 1661. South of this, on the top of the hill, now known by the name of the Nose, and this, this is important, these these little words here, because it will become relevant in the other books that I found reference in as well. So now, now known by the name of the Nose, at the eastern point of it was another North Fort where still three guns are mounted. So in 1785, they are saying there are guns mounted on this North Fort, which they've now called Nose, the Nose. Let's go to a later book. So this is 
from 1829 and it's by George Ellis and it's a history and antiquities of the borough of Weymouth and Malcolm Regis. So this is talking about the forts. There were also several forts erected in the town and about the mouth of the harbour and during that fruitful period of enterprise, the civil wars, several were hastily thrown up. First, the new fort or jetty fort erected at the entrance of the harbour at the end of the old pier immediately at the foot of the hill this is all to be taken down in 6061 which backs up what they said in the other book but in 1739 three guns were planted in the same situation i miss out this the st nicholas chapel because it's talking about the same part so third south of number one was another on the top of the hill at the eastern point called no fort this was mounted with three large guns and was subsequently used as a battery till 1821 when the government removed the guns, which were six 24 pounders. So, again, there's a reference that guns were on the Nove. Another book from 1850. And I believe this is, yeah, History and Legends of Old Castles. So, yeah, so this is talking about Sansfoot Castle, which is another uh, ruined castle in Weymouth. It, it was actually another star structure at some point. You can, can actually make out a little bit of it from above. But we are here to talk about the Note 4. So if we go to this part here, so it's, it's, it's repeating very similar information to some of the other books so the chapel was converted into a fort the new fort or jetty fort erected which still mounts guns the north fort which rises south of this town on top of the hill at the eastern point of it so yeah and oh this is another word yeah Berry's account 1645 i'm yet to find who this Berry guy is, if I'm honest, because there's quite a lot of books that seem to have just gone missing, I'll be honest. Berry mentioned, Berry's account, 1645, mentions the North Fort and another to keep the Portlanders in check, the situation of which is not now known. And that's really important as well, because I forgot to mention it in the last... Part, but I believe it says it in this book as well. So in the in the book I quoted just a second ago, Barry says the North Fort, the No Fort was erected to keep the Portlanders in. I mentions another whose situation at this time cannot be ascertained. But that would suggest that the that's that the no fort was there well before eighteen sixty because all these books are written before eighteen sixty, and are you saying all these three books have got it wrong? And I have mentioned the odd his the odd historian not very often local historian say oh there I. Do believe there there possibly was a fort there before the no fort, um, and it's all right saying this, but it's not in a it's not in a local history. And if you I go back to the Wikipedia page of the no fort, so yeah, why is is none of this on here? And I say oh, I'm only showing Wikipedia because I can't show other local websites because I don't want to I don't want to name and shame and and point the blame at them because it probably isn't their fault it, essentially they are just um, copying information that has been passed on from other books but are you telling me that 
these local historians have not come across these same books as I've come across because this took me all of about three days just to search certain keywords and I found all these books. Are you, are you telling me the local historians have, have not come across these? And But of course, if they do bring these points up, it would then bring into question the Palmerston Follies and all these documents and are they accurate or were they just written to back up the story that they are trying to feed everyone for why all these places are abandoned everywhere. And I want to touch on and bring up again, ask the question, with all the evidence presented, the cloud around when it was built, the lack of construction photos, the narrow tunnels, look at these window slits as well. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure if that metal bit in the middle is something they've put in after to block people from possibly getting in. But we'll give them that. But are you really trying to tell me that these window slits are for shooting guns out of? I mean, how are you going to fit the barrel of the, the gun realistically and be able to aim it properly? So one of the reasons I wanted to put this video together was to, to collaborate all the bits of evidence I've been gathering over the last couple of years because if I'm honest, it's taken me that long to be confident enough to start bringing these points up. And it was very interesting, I'm not sure if anyone's ever been on any history sites or local history sites and ever sort of questioned anything on there. I haven't really done too much of it, I'll be honest. I've thrown your question in here here and there, but with these books that I found that I quoted earlier, I felt confident enough to in a, in, a, in an articulate way. <laughs> Cause you have you can't you have to do stuff in a certain way with those history sites, otherwise they will just jump on you. But it's very interesting that normally when something you do post in there and is is slightly inaccurate or or um is a, an oddity or something like that, something that's not quite right, they will could be very, very quick to jump on and correct you and give you their wealth of knowledge. Well I posed this question on January the sixth just wondering if anyone else had come across this book by George Alfred Ellis called The History and Antiquities of the Borough and Town of Weymouth and Malcolm Regis, written in 1829. And I'm obviously just questioning whether the No Fort was built in 1860, like they claim. And like I say, normally, if you question any any of the local history, anything like that, they'll be quick to jump on you. Yeah. Ten days ago now. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And it's interesting. That are they dealing with it the same way as the mainstream would deal with it? And just, just say nothing. Because the more you answer, the more other questions it will bring up and then you maybe have to start like I mentioned earlier questioning whether these Palmerston four documents are accurate and I just wanted to give you a reminder of the other evidence that I've found in the previous videos because I do feel sometimes where points get lost because i kind of doing this as I'm finding it and I also am quite aware that I want to want to stay accurate I don't just want to post stuff for the sake of it um, 
but yeah here is the rest of the evidence that I've found on the nave and also other little bits and pieces that back up the story that a lot of these places were not built when they say they were built so yeah if I stop it here what does that look like to me it looks exactly the same as the corridors that you see in all these forts look at the ways the way the walls arch outwards so they go slightly wider as you go higher exactly what culverts are like exactly how you would build a culvert it makes more sense to build a structure like this for water than it would for military purposes where you've got hundreds of soldiers staff army personnel walking through these narrow narrow corridors where not even two people can get by each other I say not to mention all the weapons and huge items machinery and stuff that they would have to haul down there what what would you normally build a bridge for it would be because you're building over something that would either be a railway a waterway historically I cannot find any records for there ever being a waterway or a railway track going into the Nove so you have to ask yourself why did they build that bridge look how much grass is at the top of that it's like about a foot and a half why even bother leaving it there? So they would have made the cut in through here, you can tell, and obviously the the hill's a bit bigger here. So unless you were planning on having a rail a rail underneath, a rail running along here, or or a waterway going through here, there would be no reason whatsoever to leave that small bit of grass up the top there and build this humongous tunnel bridge that would take uh, it'd just be totally unnecessary but it wouldn't be unnecessary if it was an old waterway or if you were planning on directing water into there look inside this tunnel as well what's it very similar to so you've got narrow at the bottom and it goes wider exactly how a culvert tunnel would be and again a really obvious question but if you're building this for military purposes surely you build that bridge a little bit wider considering you've got to bring things in and out of there it would just make things awkward are you more likely to build that for water purposes or are you more likely to build that for military purposes considering you've got to bring machinery weapons all sorts of stuff in there. What makes more sense? In Bournemouth I sent a few emails out to, I believe it was five different churches, asking if they had any photos of when the church was built, or any construction photos. And every single church come back to me with the same answer, saying no, we don't have them. And referred me to online forums, or sorry, online galleries that I'd already seen. I say you can get away with Maybe one or two of these places not having the photos to back them up. But for all of them not to have it, I think you have to really start asking questions. And I say it's not a criticism of, of the local historians, they've probably never even thought of it. But they are serious questions that when you delve into these things, you realise that there's something not quite right.